Welcome again to ASP.NET Core MVC Tutorial. In previous video of this tutorial, we have configured the Entity Framework Core and the DB Context class. Now in this video, we will learn how can we create a database by using these Entity classes. How can we generate database using EF Core CLI? What is migration? The concept of migration is very important in Entity Framework Core. So we will understand both of these things. Several other things which are required in this concept we will learn in this video. So let's open Visual Studio. Before creating the database, let's have a look onto the SQL Server Management Studio as well. So here I am using SQL Server Management Studio and I am connected to the local server by using this dot. At this time you can see that we do not have any database with name Bookstore. We will create this database automatically from our bookstore web application. To generate the database, first we need to open the console window and how to do that. Go to tools, then choose this NuGet package manager and click on this package manager console. At the bottom side of your visual studio, you will see there is a new window. Now over here we need to write some queries. Before creating the database, let's have a look onto the entity framework core command line tool. So first we will start from the get help. So I can simply type get dash help and entity framework. This command will help us to understand all other commands of this entity framework core. Let's press enter. Let's extend this window a little bit. And then over here you can see that the topic is entity framework core. This is the short description, long description. And then we have several commands over here. Add migration. This is the command to add a new migration. Drop database. If we need to drop the database, then we can use this command. Get db context. Remove migration. Scaffold db context. There are several commands which we can use into our application. So first we need to start from add migration. So we have to write add migration and what is the meaning of this add migration whatever change you have done into your db context for all those changes you have to create a migration so let's give it a name suppose the name is init let's press enter we are getting an error that this application does not include this microsoft.entity framework code.design package so we can install this one as well let's copy this package Right click onto the solution and choose manage NuGet package. Let's search for this package. Press enter. And here is the package. Let's click onto the install button. Let's press OK. Press I accept. So this package has been installed. Let's build the solution. Build is successful. Again, go back to the console manager. And this time again, let's try this command. If you have noticed into our solution explorer, we got one new folder with the name migrations. And inside this migrations folder, we have two classes. Let's focus on all these classes first. So if I open this migrations, here you can see we got two files. The name of the first file is the date and the time and the name that we have given to our command, which is init. So here you can see that the name is init. Let's open this file. Inside this file, you can see that we have a method up and we have a method down. It means if we are adding something into a database, then those changes will be written over here inside this up method. If you are deleting something, then it will be written over here inside this down method. Let's see what is available inside this up method. It has a new method with create table. So it is going to create a new table. And what is the details? The name of the table is books, then the details of all the columns. And we have a constraint as well that this is going to be the primary key with name ID. If I am saying that we can generate the database automatically from our entity classes, this is not a magic. The logic is that first we create a migration and then we apply this migration onto our database. And based on this script, the database table is created. Now let's create the database and to update the database, we simply have to use a command update database. Let's press enter. We got the message done. It means the database creation is done. Let's open the management studio. Okay. Right click on the databases and refresh this. 
So over here you can see that we got a new database with name bookstore. If I extend this inside this database, you can see we have two tables. First one is books and second one is entity framework migration history. Let's have a look on the details. If I right click onto this table and choose select top thousand rows, then you can see that we got one new data over here. The production version is 3.1.3. This is the version of the EF code and we have a migration ID. Let's focus on the migration ID as well. So this is the same date and time that is used for creating that migration CS class and the name underscore in it. So it means it is the same name which is coming from the migrations class. Let's focus on the books table as well. So inside this books table we have we have title, author, description, category, language and total pages. You can also focus on the types. The type of this total page is integer. Language is nvercar max. ID is integer. All these types are coming from the entity class that we have created for this table. Inside this data folder we have a class with name books.cs and everything that we have written over here that is available as a table into your database. Now suppose you want to add few more columns to your table then you can define them over here first. Suppose I'm writing these columns created on, updated on, let's make them nullable. Okay, so let's see how can we update these columns into our database table. So again, we have to create a migration for this. So add migration and let's give it a name like added two columns, press enter. Inside the migrations folder, you can see we got one more CS class and inside this CS class, we have few things inside this up method. Over here, you can see that we have add column method and the name of the method is created on the table is books and the label is true. Inside the down, we have the same thing which is going to remove this code. So we can also remove it. First, let's update the database. Update database, press enter. Okay, let's go back to the database, refresh this table. And here you can see that we got two more new column created on and updated on. This is how you can add multiple columns to your database table. To learn about the entity framework core, you need to practice a lot of all these queries. Just like I have added two columns into a table, in the same manner you have to create multiple columns into your application. If you are practicing, then only you will be able to learn ASP.NET Core MVC and Entity Framework Core. So thank you for watching. Have a great day.